Welcome back to the walkthrough of the Thermo Fisher Scientific Junior Innovators Challenge application. In this video, we'll be going over part three project information. Some general advice is to consider this section to be like a judging interview. If you're having trouble getting started, answer the questions out loud, record your answers, and then use that as a base for filling out this section. This way, the questions will seem a little less overwhelming. And remember that you've probably also already answered these questions at your local science fair. Note that this section is two pages long, so when you scroll to the bottom, you'll have to hit next to see the rest of the questions in this section. For this part of the application, we also recommend that you first fill out your questions, uh, your responses to these questions in a Word document. That way, uh, you'll always have a copy of your responses in case of any technical glitches on this site. So the first thing that this section asks you to do is to select a category that best describes your project. You'll see about 15 different categories listed here. And these might be the same or different as the categories that you had at your local fair. Um, but this is merely a guide so that we can have the correct expertise reviewing your project. The project, this category that you select here can be the same or different from what you entered at your local fair. And if you're stuck, consider what type of expert you think would best understand the work that you've done. You can also click this link here and it'll open up a guide with all of the category descriptions um, to help you decide. We also know that sometimes your project can be kind of considered under more than one category, and that's okay. Just pick the category you think best fits your project. We'll make sure that the right evaluators um, who understand your subject matter are gonna be reading uh, your applications. So next we ask for your project title. Um, and this is gonna be how your project title will appear in our materials if you're selected as one of the top 300 junior innovators or 30 finalists. Um, it's okay to change your project title from the title that you used at your local fair. But if you're a part of a team, we do recommend that all team members use the same project title. If your title also includes any kind of special characters, you can fill that out here. For example, if you were doing um, a plant science project and you used the scientific name for a particular species of plant in your project title. Um, unfortunately, when you type in text in this box, it won't show up any particular formatting. So you can say here that plant name is in italics. And that way we know that um, we're capturing all formatting for your project title like you want it to be displayed. So the next few questions on this page are meant to give a bit of an overview of your project. So first, uh, this asks for your project summary. So you can select either one of these options and then fill out your project summary in the space below. You can either do an abstract for your project or you can uh, submit an elevator pitch. And so this asks you to imagine you're on an elevator. You only have until a 10th floor to, to describe your project to a potential investor. So either one of these are really just uh, about giving a brief overview synopsis of your project. You'll also notice that questions in this section have word limits. So these word limits are intended to give everyone equal space um, and to ask that you present your materials precisely. So this is great practice for other written applications. Um, other times when you're gonna have to follow word limits in your academic or research careers. So if you're having trouble, again, we recommend that you try writing out these answers first in a Word document, then edit your text to fit the word. Um, concise writing and staying on topic for each of these specific questions is always the goal. Um, so don't feel pressured to use all of the words in a word limit. Uh, if you don't need to use all of the words, then don't, that's totally fine. 
So after the project summary, uh, the next question asks, what was the inspiration for your project? So we want to know here, where did you get your project idea? Um, you might have gotten your idea from an online source or an external source, and that's okay, but here you should also describe what, if anything, you did to make your project unique. Um, what did you learn about your topic before you started the project? Uh, and again, if you had your, your project from an external source, what was that source and how did you make it original? Next, um, if you're selected as one of the top 300 junior innovators or 30 finalists, we're just asking if we have permission to share this summary with media. So you can select yes or no here. And then lastly, uh, this page asks a question on why is your project topic important to research? Who or what does your project impact and or benefit? So once you fill out this uh, question and every page, or sorry, every question on this page, you can hit save and continue editing or next. And now we're on the second page of questions in the project section of the application. So this page asks for more in-depth uh, details about your project. Uh, and remember, this is your opportunity to share all about your science or engineering project with those uh, judges and evaluators. So through this series of questions, we're trying to help you break down your project in a way that gives our judges what they need to review your work. Um, for engineering projects, we've often uh, offered an alternative option for most questions that relate more to engineering, the engineering design process. And remember that you should answer all these questions with enough detail so that the judges understand what you did, how you did it, why you chose to do the things you did in that particular way, and what your results were. Remember, our judges cannot see your project board. Um, so this is, a, this is the main resource of information that they're going to use to evaluate your project, in addition to the visual aid, which we'll talk about in the next section. So the first question asks, what was your research, research question? And for engineering projects, what was the human need or problem that you wanted to solve? So this is just asking what you did. What was the basis for what you did? Then we ask for your hypothesis. This is asking what you thought might happen or what were the goals that you set for your engineering design? Why? Next for methodology, uh, this includes talking about what data you collected for engineering projects, how you built your design, what were your testing procedures, um, what were your variables. So this question is really getting behind the how of your project. For engineering, think about the question in terms of how you designed uh, your apparatus, your device, et cetera. Um, and for this question, for your response, it's fine to list your response as a paragraph or uh, a list. It's really up to you. Either way, be thorough and don't assume the judges know why you did something in a certain way. Um, to help the judges better, you can also refer to your visual aid um, and we'll go through kind of how to do that. In this video, so if, for example, you have um, a chart that lists all of your test, uh, your user data, um, engineering project, for example, uh, you can label that in your visual aid as chart one. And then when you're typing out your response here, you can say refer to chart one to see um, data on uh, users' experience while testing. That way, they know exactly kind of what you're referring to in this section uh, in the visual aid as well. So the next question asks, how did you analyze and interpret your data? So what, what story does your data or your observations about the testing of your engineering design tell us? That's kind of what um, this question is getting at here. And you'll see that for each of these questions, we have a series of kind of shorter sub bullets here 
that, again, just help break down the overall question. Uh, we recommend you answer these as thoroughly as possible, um, but if something doesn't apply to your project, you don't have to answer. For example, if you didn't use any st statistical methods or special analysis, um, you obviously don't have to mention that uh, when you answer this question. Next, uh, we ask, what conclusions did you reach? So what were the results of your overall project? Um, what evidence do you have to support the claims that you're making uh, or the conclusions that you're drawing? Remember to tie back your response here and your conclusions to your hypothesis and the overall big picture of your project. So what do your results mean based on your original question? Are your results limited by any factors, time, resources, et cetera? The next few questions ask us, ask a little bit more about your project. Did any questions arise that you, or problems arise that you weren't expecting? How would you adjust your project in the future um, to address these problems? If you continue to explore your topic, what would be the next steps? What was your favorite part of working on the project and what did you learn about yourself? Um, we hope that you took away more than just uh, answering your research question or solving your original engineering design problem um, and hope that you can use some lessons here as you move on in your research experience. We want to know where you conducted your ex experimentation. You can, you can select all that apply here. Um, and next, we want to know who helped you with your project? A science and engineering pro project is never just a solitary activity, and so we expect that you had some help along the way. You could have received help from a variety of sources throughout your research project, and that's totally fine. It's best to be honest in this section um, because it helps us understand who is supervising your project, which is really important for certain kinds of projects, um, especially if you're dealing with human participants or animals, for example. Next, we ask if you are a member of a team. So team projects, this question is just for you. Um, and we know that team responses are gonna be similar um, in this section, teammates' responses are gonna be similar. Um, so this question is your opportunity to explain to us how your work was divided. Um, maybe you all worked on every piece of the project together or you divided and conquered. Both are totally fine, just let us know here. And again, a reminder for team projects is that though your uh, work you did was similar and we expect responses in the section to be similar, um, each member of a team project should be completing the application separately and individually. If you have any references or citations that you want to include, you can add them here. This question is optional, so don't feel obligated to um, fill in references or citations in this section. And then lastly, we have a question on COVID-19. Um, we know that there still might be impacts from the past few years of this pandemic um, on your research project and your ability to do research. So if you'd like to share anything here about how things might have been disrupted for you um, so the evaluators can better understand your situation, you can respond to this question, um, but it is optional. So feel free to leave a blank if it doesn't apply. So once you filled out everything in the section, you can go ahead and mark it as complete. And now you're done with part three.